In this lecture, I'm going to talk about the different levels of probability that you'll encounter. Why am I doing this? Well, you'll notice that in a lot of my machine learning courses, not all, but most of them, one of the prerequisites you'll see is probability. Unfortunately, the word probability means different things to different people. This is unlike a subject such as calculus. Typically, if you learn calculus in high school, you already know most of the calculus you need to know for machine learning. High school calculus is not too different from college level calculus, so even if you misinterpret the word calculus, you won't be in too much trouble. On the other hand, with probability, the differences between a high school course and a college course and a graduate course are vast. And so this lecture is about describing these differences. So this is our plan. The three levels we're going to talk about are number one, high school probability. Typically, this is not sufficient for machine learning. Number two, undergraduate level probability. Typically, this is exactly what you need for machine learning. And number three, graduate level probability. Typically, this is beyond what you need for machine learning. So let's dive into what each of these means. First, we have high school probability. What do you learn here? Now, it's been a while, obviously, so I hope I can make this as accurate as possible. In high school probability, you learn about basic statistical measurements such as the mean, median, and mode. As you know, these are used to describe the location of a random variable. You'll also learn about measurements such as the variance and the standard deviation. These tell us the scale of a random variable. So you might do simple experiments, like measure all the heights of the students in your classroom and calculate the mean and variance. You might also learn about some basic plots, such as the histogram and the scatter plot. If you plot the heights of people on a histogram, you would see that they form the familiar bell curve. As many students know, the infamous bell curve also applies to grades, and teachers often use the bell curve to shift grades up or down depending on what they believe the average for their courses should be. Weird concept. A few more topics you'll learn about are the multiplication and addition rules, conditional probabilities and Bayes rule, counting and permutations, and you'll learn about tree diagrams, which helps us to visualize the possible outcomes of an experiment and to reason about their probabilities. Importantly, this stuff alone is usually not enough to understand the probabilistic machinery behind machine learning. Next, let's talk about college-level probability. At this stage, it's important to differentiate between probability and statistics. Normally, these are not the same thing, and you would learn about them in separate courses. Actually, if you imagine that you're in the statistics department and getting a statistics degree, then pretty much all your courses will be in probability and statistics. So keep in mind that at this stage, things can expand a lot. If you are an actual statistics major, you might end up taking 10 or 20 courses in probability and statistics throughout your undergraduate career. In this lecture, however, we'll focus only on those courses that would teach you the fundamentals that you would need for understanding machine learning. Let's start with probability. In a college-level probability course, you would learn about topics such as the difference between discrete and continuous random variables, probability distributions, the PDF for continuous random variables, and the PMF for discrete random variables. You'll learn about the CDF, which is the integral of the PDF, or the cumulative sum of the PMF. You'll learn about conditional, joint, and marginal distributions and how to relate them to each other. This is related to Bayes' rule, but unlike the high school version of Bayes' rule, this one might involve calculus. In fact, college-level probability requires you to have taken calculus 1, 2, and 3. So you need to know about differentiation, integration, infinite series, and vector calculus. You'll learn about the common types of distributions, such as the Bernoulli, the binomial, the Poisson, the Gaussian, the exponential, and more. You'll learn about expected values, which is actually a simple operation, but usually confuses a lot of beginners. The expected value is very important in machine learning. You'll learn about the definition of special expected values, such as the mean and variance. You'll learn that what you called the mean and variance in high school are actually the sample mean and the sample variance. Importantly, you'll learn about the law of large numbers 
and the Central Limit Theorem, also called the LLN and the CLT. In some courses, although this is usually more on the side of statistics, you'll learn about maximum likelihood estimation, which is an essential component of machine learning. So what about on the statistics side of things? As mentioned, you might learn about maximum likelihood estimation. Some of mathematical statistics will cross over with a standard probability course, so you'll still cover things like joint, conditional, and marginal distributions, and you'll study common discrete and continuous distributions like the Gaussian and the binomial. But I think the main difference on the statistics side is that it emphasizes working with data. So that's why it makes sense to do a maximum likelihood estimation. You've collected a data set, and now you want to know what inferences you can draw from this data set. In addition to parameter estimation, you'll also learn to quantify the uncertainty of your estimate, in other words, confidence intervals. This also leads us to hypothesis testing. So you might learn about some of the more familiar tests, like the z-test, the t-test, and the chi-square test. In more advanced courses, you'll learn about tests like the ANOVA and tests of normality. At this point, I would like to make a little digression and talk about why this level of probability is useful in machine learning. So you don't have to take my word for it, but you can see for yourself. Consider the most basic machine learning model, linear regression. Linear regression makes the assumption that the errors are normally distributed. Of course, in order to understand this, you must first understand A, what a normal distribution is and how it's expressed mathematically, and B, you have to understand maximum likelihood estimation so that you understand how linear regression is an instance of maximum likelihood. In logistic regression, you'll learn about the cross-entropy loss, which is related to the maximum likelihood problem for the Bernoulli distribution. Related to the cross-entropy function is the KL divergence, which is a useful way to compare the difference between two probability distributions. Undergraduate probability is especially useful if you are studying probabilistic models for obvious reasons. These include naive Bayes, the Gaussian mixture model, hidden Markov models, Gaussian processes, Kalman filters, and Bayes nets. Bayes rule is important since it comes into play when you're doing regularization, in particular for understanding the relationship between a regularization and map estimation. Bayes' rule is even more important in Bayesian machine learning, again for obvious reasons. Finally, we have our highest level of probability, graduate level probability. This is usually studied by research students who want to specialize in probability and statistics. Graduate probability is a whole new beast. First, there are even more mathematical prerequisites to get to this level. Specifically, you'll want to take real analysis. To keep things short, graduate probability is about a formal and rigorous definition of probability. You'll learn about measure theoretic probability theory, and you might even relearn about basic concepts such as random variables and distributions, but this is not the same as what you learn in undergrad. One useful thing about measure theoretic probability is that it unifies discrete and continuous distributions. You might learn about a specific type of continuous time stochastic process known as Brownian motion. If you know your history, you might recognize Brownian motion as something that Albert Einstein worked on. As you know, Brownian motion is important for describing the motion of particles in physics, but also for describing the movement of stock prices. So financial engineers, also known as quants, are also interested in graduate level probability. This leads to the study of stochastic calculus, the Black-Scholes model, and so forth. These are standard tools in the financial analyst toolbox. But as mentioned, this is beyond what we need for machine learning, so luckily, most of us won't have to worry about going this far. To summarize this lecture, we talked about the three different levels of probability. As you saw, there is quite a big difference between each of the three levels. High school probability and statistics will give you an idea of some of the basics, but this will not be sufficient for machine learning. College level probability and statistics will be the most appropriate for machine learning. This might encompass one or more courses at the undergraduate level, depending on the curriculum at your school. 
Graduate level probability is usually more advanced than what you would need for machine learning, although the lines do blur at certain times. Unless you plan on doing quantitative finance, then you can probably study a lot of machine learning without needing to invoke graduate level probability.